Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about the treasure of Lemon Brown. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, The Treasure of Lemon Brown by Walter Dean Myers is a very interesting short story. Basically, what happens within this work is that we meet a kid by the name of Greg, um, and Greg is an individual who wants to play basketball, he's, he's 14, he's in high school, uh, and he's not doing so well in school, all right? He's not doing so well, and his father wants him to work hard. His father has worked hard all of his life. Um, his father is a postal worker, and his father is always telling Greg, you know, how proud he is of himself, that he works so hard to make something of his life, to get a good job, uh, to provide for his family, and all of this. Um, but Greg really doesn't care, and Greg is failing math. Um, Greg is failing at school, and his father is really not happy. Greg wants to play basketball, but because, you know, of his poor skills uh, in school, he's not, he's, he's pretty much in danger of failing. So his father's giving him the talk. His father's telling him, son, you need to work harder, you need to do harder. Um, if you want to be successful in life, if you want to be like me, uh, you have to hit the books. You have to do better in school. Greg never listens to his father. He's never, um, you know, he's never with it. He's never, you know, listening to his father, understanding what his father has to say. Um, to him, his father's just a nag, um, and, you know, he just he's just tired of it. One day, you know, while Greg is coming home, you know, it starts to rain, and basically he thinks about, like, while he's on the porch, he thinks about, man, I don't want to go inside my house uh, to face my father. There's this, you know, abandoned house, um, I'm going to go to it, I'm going to hide in it while it's raining so I don't have to face my father right now. Um, so Greg goes in there and he thinks it's going to be a normal uh, day in his life. And keep in mind, this is in Harlem, this is in New York. Um, you know, New York is, you know, can be a tough place to live. Um, and so, you know, Greg is, gets into this house, it's, it's abandoned, there's broken furniture, there's things all over the place. He finds this broken couch, he sits on it, then he realizes he's not alone. He hears some breathing, he hears some movement, and he gets really scared, really tense, and he's like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do here. Uh, this is a really bad situation for myself. And basically, he meets Lemon Brown, and Lemon Brown said he had a razor that could cut a week in nine days. Now, this was actually very, very funny to me, uh, because Lemon Brown has a way of talking that's like the dialect is... Um, well, he, he, I would say kind of like a, 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 a southern black man. Um, that's the vibe I get from, from Lemon Brown. Uh, and we get different names for Lemon Brown. At some point, he was called Sweet Lemon Brown. Um, you know, he was a blues singer. Um, you know, he had a, a history of traveling the country and singing the blues. Um, so Greg learns all this about Sweet Blue Lemon Brown. Um, so Lemon Brown, he meets, you know, Greg meets Lemon Brown, the, 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 the dilapidated, uh, the abandoned home. Um, and basically, at first it was kind of scary because they're in the dark. They don't know each other. They don't know if they're trying to hurt each other. Uh, but they become friends really quickly. They, they talk to each other. Um, and then ultimately what happens is three thugs come out of nowhere uh, because they've been hearing that Lemon Brown's been talking about this treasure. You know, I have a treasure, I have a treasure. And Lemon Brown keeps telling everybody, man, I have a treasure, I have a treasure. And they think it's money um, because the, the thugs, you know, they've heard stories of homeless people um, having a stash somewhere. And so the thugs come into this, this, this abandoned home and they're like, Lemon Brown, we know you're in here. We know you've been sleeping here. Uh, we want your treasure. Lemon Brown takes Greg um, and they go hide, right? They go hide and the thugs are, you know, they have flashlights. They're looking all over for Lemon Brown. They're looking at his rags and all the things that he had. And they can't find him. Eventually, Lemon Brown, you know, he's all ragged up. His whole body is tied up and, and he's dressed in rags. Um, and Lemon Brown, he comes out. They, they're actually, they went up. Um, in this home, they were like in the in the stairway. Uh, they were in the landing somewhere hiding. Um, and Lemon Brown, he comes up. He kind of looks very ghostish, monsterish. He puts his arms up and he makes himself look scary. And then out of nowhere, from fear, Greg like makes this howl. And then Lemon Brown, after Greg howls, he jumps out of nowhere and attacks the thugs. And they get scared because they see this old homeless man dressed in rags that looks crazy, and they hear howling. 
Um, and so the, the Fugs, they get scared and they run away into the night. And Lemon Brown and, and Greg, they, they stay inside the house, they talk a little bit. And then eventually what happens is Lemon Brown shows Greg his treasure. Now, the treasure is not money, it's not gold, it's not, I mean, this throughout the whole story, I mean, from the title, we're expecting some type of money, gold bars, diamonds, something, right? Some type of treasure. But it's not really any type of of treasure that you would think about or, or think of. Uh, Lemon Brown just has these uh, newspaper clippings and an uh, old harmonica uh, back from his days of, of you know, uh, of, of playing the blues. And, you know, he doesn't have the blues anymore because times got good. He got so good at playing the blues that he had no more blues because um, he, he was making money playing the blues. Uh, he was, you know, taking care of his son, taking care of his wife. Um, life was good and then you know he stopped um, playing the blues um, and then more blue things happened to him because his wife died his son went off to war and died and so he lost his family that he was working so hard to provide for and now he's just a homeless man um, going from here and there holding his newspaper clippings and his old harmonica that's pretty busted and old uh, but that's his treasure because that that's his his, his personal history uh that his um heritage in in of a sense uh, his personal heritage um and um it's a connection between him and his son because uh, him and his son um well they had the clippings that that bind them together um and you know lemon brown had the newspaper clippings and and the old harmonica uh you know like he had these rags right he had these strings he tied these rags around his right leg um and um he put the harmonica and newspaper clippings uh um you know he tied it around his right leg uh and um, he carried it around um and so it's a very interesting story he does reveal this to greg greg doesn't really think much about the newspaper clippings and the old harmonica is like oh sure what whatever this is that's cool you know greg is not that uh you know impressed by the newspaper clippings uh but still uh greg learns a valuable lesson you know he does eventually go home he parts ways with lemon brown they do get you know they bond a little bit through this experience fighting off the thugs learning about each other and each other's lives you know greg telling lemon brown that he's only he was only in the old house not to do anything to him but just to get away from the, the rain or i guess more specifically just to get away from his father um, and then ultimately, Greg goes home um, with leaving us, in, in terms of, of the reader, with this idea that Greg has changed. He's transformed in some way. Because by, you know, communicating and connecting with Lemon Brown here, what ultimately happens, Greg has learned the importance of family value, the importance of family history, personal history, the importance of connecting with one's father, um, and also working hard in life to make something out of yourself. Uh, because what, what does a man got if he doesn't have anything to pass down to his children? So Lemon Brown taught Greg a lot about family, uh, family importance and, and value, what's valuable in life. Um, so in terms of deeper meaning and analysis here, this, this is a, a growing of age story for Greg right here. Because Greg, at, at one point, all he cared about is playing basketball, doing his own thing, not caring about his grades. But through his meeting with Lemon Brown, um, meeting the, the thugs that almost beat him up, um, and learning about Lemon Brown and his son and his wife and his struggles of life. Um, it taught Greg a little bit about family. It taught what it meant to be a family, to fight for one another, to provide for other people. So it made Greg a, a more responsible. A, a, we can assume, we can assume here, let's just say we're going to assume that Greg has learned a valuable lesson of what it means to be a good person, of what it means to work hard in school, to not be lazy, to, you know, respect your father and honor your father, and maybe, you know, take the advice of your father because your father is, at the end of the day, looking out for you. Um, so, you know, this the lesson is the lesson that he learned with Lemon Brown, um, it seems as if it's going to help him in the future. Um, and and it's it's very important that, that kids get things like this. I mean, this story um, has a lot to say about us growing up and what we learn. And the things that we learn, they do shape us. So even though that Lemon Brown is homeless, um, he doesn't see himself as homeless. He sees himself as a very rich and valuable man. Uh, because, you know, he had a family, he provided for his family, he had a career, uh, he had a successful career, uh, but ultimately tragedy hits and, 
Um, well, at least he still has something that's valuable to him. Even though he's a homeless man, everybody in their eyes, everybody thinks that he's, he's worthless, he doesn't, he doesn't have any money. But to him, he's a very rich man because of his newspaper clippings and his harmonica and the, the family ties that he has with um, his son and his wife and you know people that, that have passed away from him. Uh, so he hasn't given up hope in his life. So Lemon Brown will, he's a survivor. He's a survivor. That's what we can say about him. Uh, but yeah, in terms of, of deeper meaning, again, this fa this story is all about family ties, family bonds, the relationship between a, a son and his father, the relationship of, of working hard and, and what does it mean to provide for one's family, and, and what is also, what's a treasure? Because we, we always define treasure as money, gold, you know finances right but in this in this format um it, it you know lemon brown is saying that you know family is the most important treasure the family the family connections that we have the family connections that we hold on to that's the most valuable that's the most rich things uh in the world because you can have a billion a trillion dollars in the world but if you have nobody to share it with nobody to eat with nobody to share a meal with to share a drink with nobody to laugh with to smile with even nobody to argue with or get angry with because at the bottom line you know we're all humans humans we live um you know controversy uh we live for controversy for arguments you know that's all part of the human experience controversy arguments happiness joy sadness if you have nobody to experience experience those things with life is is boring life i mean you can ha you can live in a mansion but if you have no one to share it with it's not worth anything. It might be nice. It might look nice, but if you have, if you don't have a wife, you don't have kids, you don't have family members to share life with, you just have a bunch of stuff. It's 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 no more valuable than a box of Legos. Um, so, yeah, that that's that's what you get from this story. So that's all I have to say about it. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.